Okay, uh, chapter 9 in pre-cal talks a lot about system of equations. So it's something that I think uh, you've probably learned over and over and over again. So I didn't feel the need to uh, spend a ton of time talking about chapter 9, but I want to talk about um, just real quick the, the four different ways that we can solve systems of equations and then um, go through some examples of those. And basically how we can apply the things that you already know about some of these to working with equations that are much more difficult to work with. So. Um, the four methods which you already know, hopefully the first three, we've got substitution, elimination, and, and graphing. And then um, the fourth method is solving using matrices. And uh, I'll spend a, a lot more time on that than I do the other, the other three. So um, the first, first up is substitution. Um, so remember, if you want to solve a system of equations using substitution, um, the first thing that you need to do is you need to take one of your equations and you need to solve it for one of the variables. So the easy thing to do here would be to take this, this first equation and solve this for y. So it would be, uh, if I subtract the 2x over, it would be y equals negative 2x plus 1. And then I'm going to substitute this in for y in the other equation, right? So I'm going to have 3x plus 4 times negative 2x plus 1 equals 14. I'm just going to solve this and then plug it back in and, and, uh, and get y, so I'll have my, my um, solution to the system. So uh, if I distribute the 4, that's going to be negative 8x, and then plus 4 equals 14. That's going to give me negative 5x. If I subtract the 4 over, that's going to give me 10. So x is negative 2. And then again, I just want to um, do what's called back substitution and plug this back into one of the equations and solve for y. Uh, it's usually with substitution easy to go to what um, the equation was that you solved for, for one of the variables. So y equals negative 2x plus 1. And then if x is negative 2, then y would be 5. And remember, you want to write your final answer as an xy point because we are really finding where two equations uh, intersect. Okay, so in this case, these are both lines, and I'm just finding the one point where the two lines cross. Um, so applying this idea of substitution to something a little bit more difficult, um, find all solutions to the system. And this time, um, I have a couple of different um, equations. One is, the second one is a line, right? They're both linear terms. And I could rewrite that in y equals mx plus b form, which is what I'm going to do in, in a minute. But um, this is just a line. This top one, I have an x squared and a y squared. And they're added together. So this is something that we just talked about. Um, this is, um, you would think, an ellipse because they're both squared and, and I'm adding. But remember, if the coefficient is the same, um, then it's actually a circle. So this is going to be a circle. Um, and the fact that this is 100 means, a, means it's a circle with a radius of 10. So I would go out 10 each way uh, from the origin and, and make a circle there. So uh, kind of weird because you haven't looked at a system with something other than a line before um, or possibly a parabola. But now we're looking at. One of my equations is a circle. I'm still going to go about solving it the same way. So um, I'm going to take this bottom equation, and I'm going to solve it for y. So what I would do is I would add y over to this side, subtract 10 over. So I would get y equals 3x minus 10. And then I'm going to take this 3x minus 10 and plug it in for y in this other equation. So I would have x squared plus 3x minus 10 squared equals 100. Um, make sure that if you're squaring a binomial, you FOIL. So this is going to be x squared plus, if I FOIL this, I get 9x squared minus 30x minus 30x, which would be minus 60x, and then plus 100. OK, that's just FOILing 3x minus 10. And then that equals 100. Um, so we would have, um, you know, at this point, I, I can distribute a 1 here. I don't really need to do that. The parentheses aren't really necessary. I just wanted you to, to see that. So I really just have 10x squared minus 60x. And I'm going to go ahead and subtract this 100 over. So I have equal 0. And that's nice, because when I'm solving a quadratic, I like to have it equal to 0. Um, next step, I would just factor out a 10x from this, uh, from this side. And I get uh, x minus 6 equals 0. And then I would set each of those equal to 0. 10x equals 0 means that x equals 0. 
and x minus 6 equal to 0 means that x equals 6. So I've got a couple of different x solutions. And what that tells me is that these two equations uh, will cross uh, twice. I've got two different x solutions. So I, I need to get both of their y solutions. Um, you can use either equation. It's probably easier to use the one that is uh, doesn't have the squares. It's you know just a line. Uh, it's a little bit easier. So I get negative y. So if x equals zero, then uh, I plug in zero for x. Negative y equals ten. So y equals negative ten. So that would go with this one. And then if x equals six, three times six minus y equals ten. Um, let's see, this would be 18. Subtract that over. I would get negative y equals negative 8. So I get y equals 8. So this tells me that these uh, two equations, which again, we've got a circle and a line. This line will cross the circle at two points. It'll cross it at 0, negative 10, and also at 6, 8. Okay, so um, that's just applying the idea of substitution to, to something that uh, some equations that you really haven't thought about using um, system of equations with before. Okay, so next up we have elimination, and I'm going to kind of do the same thing here. Um, elimination, remember, is uh, pretty easy to do. Um, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have the same coefficient in front of either x or y, and then you want uh, one of those to be negative, and then you would add um, the equations together to eliminate one of the variables. Um, if you don't already have that, you need to multiply one of the equations by some constant so you can get that. But in the case that, that we have here, I've got a positive 2y and a negative 2y, and those are going to cancel out uh, right away. So on this example, using elimination, I can simply just add these together right away, and I get that 4x equals uh, 16, which means that x equals 4. You get to your first solution a lot more quickly with elimination than you do substitution most of the time. Um, and then I want to plug that back in and solve. So I'm going to use the bottom equation. And I would say that uh, if x equals 4, then uh, this term will just be 4 minus 2y equals 2. Uh, so you subtract the 4, negative 2y equals negative 2. So y equals 1. And so my solution would be the point for 1. Again, this is just two, these are just two lines. They cross at the point for 1. Um, the next example of elimination, I'm using um, not two lines. These would, uh, these would be two parabolas. Uh, I've got an x squared. I've got uh, no y squared, so I've only got one squared term. Um, so these are both parabolas. They're both vertical parabolas. Um, well, I'm sorry. They, they would both, yeah, they're both vertical. They would both be going down. And if, if you don't, if that doesn't make sense, think about solving for y. They, the neg there would be a negative in front of the x squared term on both of these. But we've got two parabolas that are, uh, that are opening downward. Um, they are going to cross, though. Um, and if you think about parabolas, they could cross um, in 0, 1, or 2 places. Um, so we'll just work this out. And, and the nice thing is, if the way it's set up right now, I can kind of just do elimination the same way I did it here. Um, what I would do is I'm going to eliminate the x squareds. So I'm going to multiply this by negative 5. Actually, I'm going to do positive 5 on that. I'm going to multiply the top one by positive 5, and I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by negative 3. That's going to give me my x squared terms to both be 15, with one of them being positive and one of them being negative. So I'd have 15x squared plus 10y equals 5 times 26 would be 130. And then multiplying the bottom equation by negative 3, I would have negative 15x squared minus 21y equals negative 9. That allows me to eliminate my x squareds. It gives me negative 11y equals 121, which means that y equals negative 11. So you might think, um, that after that point, there's going to be one intersection point. Um, but that may not be true, especially when you have squares. So let's, let's check that. Um, I do know that, that they, they meet where the y coordinate is negative 11. Um, but I'm going to plug this back into one of the equations and, and solve and see, um, see where they meet. So I'm going to use the top equation. Um, 3x squared plus 2 times negative 11 equals 26. 
So 3x squared minus 22 equals 26. If I add the 22 over, I get 3x squared equals 48. If I divide by 3, I get x squared equals 16. And if I take the square root, then I get x equals positive and negative 4. So that tells me that these two parabolas meet at 4, negative 11, and also at negative 4, negative 11, which means I actually have two intersection points. Uh, we may not have, have seen that when we just saw this first one, that uh, I only got one y solution. So um, just kind of another application of elimination um, where you're going from something very basic to this to something a little bit more involved um, like this. So. Um, I'm not going to go over any um, examples of solving by graphing. Um, I'll talk about more about that in class uh, when it comes to how we can use the graphing calculator to help us find these things. Um, we'll do that in class together. But uh, those first two methods that, that we know, uh, substitution and elimination, um, hopefully you haven't forgotten how to use those. Um, and then in the next video, I'm going to talk about something completely new, which is solving a system using a matrix.